Hello and welcome to Legal Briefs. This is the XRP Connect the Dots edition and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to approach this video, but allow me to start with this. Watch it all please to get you in the mood. There's something happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I've got to beware It's time we stop Children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going round Stop Children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going round Okay, now that you're hopefully in the mood, sit back, make yourself comfortable, and I will take you to places you have never been before. I, for one, can't wait. Welcome back, and first I have to give our prophylactic disclaimer. Don't take anything I say as legal, and certainly today not as financial advice. If you need financial advice, hold a seance and ask this gentleman. Bonus points if you can name him in the comments. Make sure you type it with an invisible hand. Hint, hint. Okay, what I want to lay out for you today is that something is very, very off in this SEC versus Ripple litigation, and it's kind of subtle, but it's very glaring to me because remember, I see everything, but know nothing. And yes, it means that something is happening here. Now to start, I have to take you all the way back to early June, and the battle back then was over whether the SEC had to produce certain documents related to its opinions on whether Ether, Bitcoin, and XRP were securities. And that issue came to a very contentious hearing in front of the judge all the way back on April 6th of this year. And this is what the judge ordered. Looking at page 51 of the transcript, the judge said, quote, I'm going to grant in large part the defendant's motion. I think that the discovery related to Bitcoin and Ether is relevant. I think it is relevant to the court's eventual analysis with respect to the Howey factors. I also think it is relevant to the fair notice defense that Ripple is raising. Later, after that hearing, the issue of those documents came up in a June 14th letter to the judge where it seemed the SEC, quote, promised to substantially complete its production of the internal documents before July 2nd. And if you were listening to the court hearing on July 15th, you might recall the Ripple lawyer at the very end of the hearing complained to the judge that the SEC had not produced one single internal document as ordered. And the judge said something to the effect that if that was the case, they should file a brief with her the next week and she would rule on it. Now, that would have been last week what the judge was requesting, and guess what? Nothing was filed. Nothing. Now, was this issue suddenly resolved out of thin air? Hmm. The SEC is raising a privileged defense to producing these documents, and so they had to give Ripple what's called a privilege log, and it's basically a list of all the documents that the SEC is saying they don't have to give Ripple. And I, for one, refuse to believe that Ripple isn't going to think that at least one of those documents should be given to them. But yet, we haven't seen the motion to compel the production that the judge requested. And it's not because there's a lot of time left to do it. Believe it or not, there's only one month left of fact discovery. So, Suddenly, this humongous area of contention disappears in a puff of smoke? Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Hmm, indeed. So, next we had the deposition of former director Hinman. The SEC strongly opposed the deposition in its entirety and requested the judge quash the deposition, which is a cool way of, of saying stop it. Looking right at the first sentence, quote, Plaintiff Securities and Exchange Commission SEC respectfully requests a conference with the court to seek an order quashing the deposition subpoena directed to William H. Hinman, close quote. So the matter was briefed and the hearing was held on the deposition and something very strange jumped out at me during that hearing on July 15. But there's something that jumped out at me that you might have missed and I had to go get my notebook so I could remember. Remember, nothing gets by me except if I don't make a note of it. So when it became obvious that the judge was going to allow the deposition to move forward, she asked the parties whether it was moving forward on Monday because it had been scheduled for the 19th already. And Ripple said, yes, it's moving forward. And the attorney for the SEC said she wasn't sure that we would need time to evaluate that is what I wrote down. Now, this was a scheduled deposition. The judge said that she was going to allow it to go forward, but the SEC will evaluate that? Very curious. And that was it. It was kind of a tell during the hearing that the SEC was desperate to not have the Hinman deposition take place. And also, recall how far apart the parties were on what the deliberative privilege protected Hinman from questioning. 
The SEC basically argued that everything Hinman said outside of public speeches was privileged, and Ripple argued that almost nothing was privileged. The parties were basically a Grand Canyon apart. So imagine my surprise when just four days later, I see this letter, and in paragraph two, quote, we have reached an understanding pursuant to which the defendants may examine Mr. Hinman without triggering a privilege objection from the SEC, close quote. Really? The Grand Canyon was crossed just like that? What is this, evil Knievel jump? Hmm. And what happened a couple days before that miraculous agreement? Something I've never seen before in litigation. Two commissioners of the SEC come out arguing, essentially, that Ripple's fair notice defense was valid, that market participants do not have fair notice in the crypto space. Hmm. So, now it is July 29 as we film this and the deposition of Mr. Himmon was supposed to have taken place on July 26, three days ago. Having watched this litigation from beginning and with the stakes as high as they are, I refuse to believe that former director Himmon, with all that is on the line, marched into the conference room on the 26th and answered all the questions posed to him by Ripple's lawyers. I just refuse to believe that. I've had small, small claims cases where I've sued for $10,000, where I've fought tooth and nail over one single question that the deponent didn't answer under a privileged objection. Now, maybe the $20 million Ripple legal team, with more lawyers than most soccer teams have players, needs more than just two days to brief the issue when it is under a discovery cutoff of around only a month. Possible, but not likely for me. But all of these recent things are hmms and very interesting, but we can't really draw any conclusions from them other than that they are really just not very likely to happen in a case like this. But you came here for my rampant speculation and conclusions, and as always, I aim to please. So I'm going to speculate two things for your viewing pleasure. First, I don't think the deposition of Director Hinman took place this last Monday. If it had, where is the transcript to be filed under seal for an in-camera review by the judge? Where is the motion to compel him in to answer certain questions? Is it possible that the SEC and Ripple attorneys suddenly became little lawyer angels and agreed on everything last week so that they wouldn't have to burden the judge with their bickering? No, trust me, that lawyer doesn't really exist. Which leads me to conclude that the deposition never took place. So that's my first speculative conclusion, which leads me to my second and last speculative conclusion, which is one that might have escaped mere mortals, but I was on another plane of existence when I saw this and what it meant, peyote. So stay with me here for the last point. Recall that shortly, very shortly after the commissioner's statements came out, basically supporting Ripple, that the individual defendants filed the statement with the court along with an explanatory letter, and that happened on July 19. Then Ripple turned around the very next day on July 20 and filed basically the same thing. And why did it file the statement right away? Look at paragraph two, quote, to ensure that the record on the motion to strike is complete, Ripple requests that the court consider the two commissioner's statement to the court in support of Ripple's fair notice defense, close quote. Now at that point, the SEC motion to strike Ripple's fair notice defense, which is extremely important, was fully briefed. The SEC filed the motion, Ripple replied, and the SEC replied to the reply. So the motion is fully briefed at that point, and what that means in federal court is that after the issue is fully briefed, a judge can rule on it, and Judge Torres can rule on that motion at any time without further notice, without even oral argument. So they got it in right away. Then the next day on the 21st, we saw the SEC respond to both the individual defendants and Ripple in one response letter. And then on the 23rd, the individual defendants filed a reply to the SEC. So now the individual defendants had fully briefed the issue and their record was complete. And on Twitter, on July 23rd, I wrote, quote, expect to see the Ripple reply shortly. And I wrote that on July 23rd, and then it was July 24th, and then it was the 25th, the 26th, and today it is July 29 and no reply. Ripple never replied to the SEC's brief. Again, you have some of the best security lawyers in the country working for Ripple, and this is a reply that is time sensitive, and it still hasn't been filed. Ripple has not replied and has left unaddressed the issues raised in the SEC's reply of July 21st. Now, wow, did Ripple blow it? Do Ripple's 23 lawyers need more than nine days to draft a three-page reply brief? Or, wait for it. Or is it possible, or yes, even likely, that Ripple didn't bother to file a response to the SEC because it didn't need to? And why didn't Ripple need to? 
Well, here we go. Ripple didn't need to file a reply because there were serious discussions going on regarding Shh. <whistles> really? It's the big crescendo reveal of my video? Of maybe all my XRP videos and I get shushed by the old spice guy? I was just saying that everything leading up to this last week points to this case being very close to Shh. <whistles> okay, fine. Are there other possible explanations? Yes, of course. I mean, one of the main counsel could be very sick, knock on wood. The case could be stayed. There's a hundred things. There's just, that's just one thing that comes to mind and there could be hundreds of others. But my best guess and what I think is the most likely case is that there is going to be a separate Nope. Baby Yoda, so cool. And how will you know if I'm just wrong, which is doubtful, or perhaps one of the other possible scenarios has passed. Look for something to be filed in the case by this Friday. If nothing is filed this Friday, my guess is that, well, let me just say there's something happening here, but what it is ain't exactly clear. And with that, I think I've said enough. The one thing I've learned in my 50 trips around the sun is that time reveals all. Be patient and you will see. Thanks for watching. If I'm really wrong on this, you want to start a garage band instead of doing the YouTube thing?